a recent paper in the journal Atmospheric Chemistry and Physics entitled The 2023 Global Warming Spike Was Driven by the El Nino Southern Oscillation made the claim that the large spike in global average surface temperature observed in 2023 was primarily the result of a long La Nina event followed by a relatively strong El Nino event and not the result of major changes in the rate of greenhouse gas emissions or other human caused climate effects. In this video, I will explain how a long La Nina followed by a strong El Nino can create an apparent spike in the global average surface temperatures, even though greenhouse gas concentrations in the atmosphere continue to rise. To understand why there was a large spike in global average surface temperatures during 2023 and into the early part of 2024, we need to know a bit about the weather pattern known as the El Nino Southern Oscillation. The El Nino Southern Oscillation, or ENSO, is a recurring large-scale weather pattern involving changes in the temperature of waters in the central and eastern tropical Pacific Ocean. Over periods that range from about three to seven years, the surface waters across a large swath of the tropical Pacific Ocean warm or cool by anywhere from one to three degrees centigrade compared to normal. This oscillating warming and cooling pattern, referred to as the ENSO cycle, directly affects rainfall distribution in the tropics and can have a strong influence on weather across the United States and other parts of the world. El Nino and La Nina are the extreme phases of the ENSO cycle. Between these two phases is a third phase called ENSO neutral. During an El Nino, there is a warming of the ocean surface, uh, or above average sea surface temperatures occur in the central and eastern tropical Pacific Ocean. Although the El Nino forms in the central and eastern tropical Pacific Ocean, it can affect weather over much of the planet. During an El Nino, thermal energy that has been stored in the upper few hundred meters of the ocean is released into the atmosphere, adding to the heat already in the atmosphere. During the La Nina cycle, a cooling of the ocean surface or below average sea surface temperatures occur in the central and eastern tropical Pacific Ocean. Like El Nino, La Nina can affect weather all over the planet. La Ninas generally result in fewer clouds, allowing incoming solar radiation to transfer thermal energy into the oceans rather than into the atmosphere. This effect can keep global average surface temperatures from rising or even can reduce them slightly. During the neutral phase, neither El Nino or La Nina occurs. Often, the tropical Pacific sea surface temperatures are generally close to average for the whole planet. While the La Ninas typically are relatively short-lived, less than a year in duration, occasionally they can last longer. That's what led to the very large spike in global temperature during 2023 and into 2024. A three year long La Nina suppressed increases in the global average surface temperature. Then a strong El Nino developed, which allowed much of the excess thermal energy stored in the upper levels of the ocean to be released back into the atmosphere creating the 2023 temperature spike that has continued into 2024. This chart shows quite dramatically the interaction between the ENSO and global warming. Plotted in the chart of the yearly average global surface temperatures for each year since 1950. The blue dots identify years during which La Niña's occurred while red dots identify the years when El Niños occurred. 
The long-term upward trend in global average surface temperature is the result of climate change caused by greenhouse gas emissions. While both La Niña's and El Niño's create fluctuations in the global average surface temperature, those fluctuations generally are small compared to the long-term temperature increase caused by greenhouse gas emissions. Usually, both La Niña and El Niño weather patterns are of short duration, and the fluctuations that they cause in the global average surface temperature just appear as noise in the data. However, on the very rare occasions when a La Niña pattern lasts for significantly more than one year and is followed by a strong El Niño pattern, that can cause a spike in global average surface temperature that is well above the noise. This is what happened during 2023. In this chart from the University of Maine Climate Reanalyzer, the orange line shows the world daily average surface temperature for 2023, while the red line shows the world daily average surface temperature for 2024. If you look carefully at the orange line during January of 2023, you can see the effect of the La Nina, which was still ongoing at that time and which was lowering the global average surface temperatures by almost half a degree centigrade. Over the next few months, the La Nina was ending and ENSO was in its neutral phase on its way to an El Nino phase that began in June of 2023 and lasted until mid-May of 2024. Tracing the orange line for the remainder of 2023, the major upward spike in global temperatures becomes apparent. Following the red line from the beginning of 2024, through mid-May of 2024, when the El Nino ended, the temperature spike is still apparent. When the El Nino ended in mid-May of 2024, ENSO moved into a neutral phase, with a weak La Nina phase predicted to start late in 2024. Although the El Nino ended in mid-May, so far in 2024, there has been very little decrease in global average surface temperature, and even if the weak La Nina phase materializes as predicted, there likely won't be much additional decrease in global average surface temperature, at which point the global average surface temperature spike will, will look more like a step than a spike. If that becomes the case, then the overall effect of the three-year-long La Nina followed by a year-long strong El Nino was to mask a significant rise in global average temperature driven by greenhouse gas emissions. Only time will tell. I hope that you have found this video informative. If you have any comments or questions, please note them in the comments section of the video. I will do my best to respond. Also, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.